just before we start, just wanted to say a big thanks to Jeanette Fletcher for organising such a great event. Um, my name is Steve. Um, I'm a consultant specialising in the world of water. I help companies, startups, people who want to rebrand, people who want to pop into um, production, marketing, sales strategy, anything you can think of. And that's what I do. Some of you might know me better for this. This is a Instagram feed that I put up two years ago, in fact, when we were in China. Just as a kind of an idea to have almost like a almost like a coffee table book of any kind of bottle of water you can think of that might be interesting, you know, whether it's design, whether it's a story, whether it's a purely special kind of natural providence for your I started out thinking, well, you know, if I can keep, keep going for three months, you know, that would be it. It's unlikely I'll find more interesting models to keep posting. Here I am two years later, nearly six hundred bottles of water is posted on the Instagram feed. And there's still plenty more. So in some ways it's it's positive because there's so much going into the industry, but it's also perhaps worrying for some people that maybe the market is a little saturated. So something to bear in mind. Doesn't mean that it's not a good idea to get into the business, but maybe focus your minds on exactly what you're trying to do and you know make sure you're aware of the competition. So take a look at the Instagram feed if you're if you're bored at the airport or in the waiting room. It's always fun just to flip through again, you know, whether you like design or whether you like a story or or some kind of drawn or product. Today I'm just going to go and look very, very briefly, without too much depth, at some, some trends that I think, just personally, uh, are probably something to look out for in the next 12 months to two years. It's personal, and the idea is a little bit to provoke some debate as well, so don't, don't dare to tell me I'm completely wrong. Uh, the idea is really just to look at things that maybe uh, small companies, especially startups, that don't necessarily have a lot of cash, can find niches in, in, in a market that is, as we know, dominated by the likes of Nestle and Danone. So I'm just going to talk about distribution. Um, super premium, whatever that, that is, I'll just show you some examples. Retro, again, maybe something more design and marketing, but I think it's important to be aware of. Dispensers, you know, it sounds something scandalous that we're going to talk about dispensers that have a tap on them and that people can drink with water. But let's have a look at that and see what what's coming on in the market. The whole concern about PET, plastic, that it's, it's contaminating our oceans. People are more and more concerned about that. Nobody's really coming up with a definitive solution, but I'll show you some examples of people who are trying to address that problem. New ideas about water carrying. People talk about food and wine and chocolate. I've got some other examples, but again, could be uh, an opportunity in the future. Sustainability, quality, Social responsibility, all those things we, we try to like bolt on to a, a brand to help us feel that we're doing something more than just making money. Um, an intangible like cool, what is that? I mean, I'll, I'll look at that. And then another kind of category that, in my opinion, is growing is, is water bottled from rain, salt, and <coughs> other strange uh, <coughs> liquids. Specialist distribution. It's, it surprised me. I checked this week or last week. There's now 30 specialist water distributors around the world. I forgot to take you as many logos as I could find, but there are more. Because we're distributing their covers up. <laughs> 30. I mean, that's that's extraordinary, especially uh, when you realize how difficult it is to actually make, mm, make an impact in the market. Uh, these guys have been around in general for, for many years. I mean, Brent is a great example, but there are some other brands that have been in the market for a long time. The guys in France, especially uh, Eau de Globe, Eau de Monde, um, Aqua Moritz, which I can use. And other smaller companies <coughs> come and go, but at the moment there's an awful lot. And I think that's encouraging. Uh, but what I wanted to really emphasize is the fact that these guys are generally small or medium sized companies. They struggle, they do their best. And I think several people have commented before, if, if you're going to try and convince them to take your brand, you've got to look after them. You've got to really hold their hand, make them feel that you really care. Don't just assume that you're gorgeous design bottles enough to, to get a drink in the market. Go and visit them. Mm, try and help some training and events. Uh, just you know, Rather than spending a lot of money <laughs> on other aspects of your business, maybe invest in 
travel costs, hotel costs, things that really just help to build up a relationship. That's a, very much, in my experience, something that people underestimate. And I think it's something that, especially the small brands, really have an advantage over the big brands if you really do that properly. So, I mean, we've got people just in Russia, New Zealand, um, Germany, France, the US. I mean, it's extraordinary the reach. But again, some of these will come and go, and they'll probably disappear if the brands that are on their portfolio don't work. And that often is not just because they're not, it's not because they're not good laws, it's simply because the brand doesn't pay enough attention to the brand building and, and building relationships. So I think that's an important key trend that despite the economic difficulties in the world, despite the concern for environmental issues, people are still setting up water businesses and more and more, not just in Europe and North America, but in other areas, especially Asia. So again, it's, it's a pretty positive step, but you know, don't assume that that just means you've got a free ride. And again, apart from the special distributors, there's a whole range of wine, whiskey, uh, spirits in general distributors. There are also opportunities. These guys are perhaps more skeptical about bottled water, but again, if you can do one water in, a, in a, an otherwise alcoholic portfolio and look after them and convince them that it's a worthwhile business, then again, that's another opportunity. I'm not saying special water distributors are the, the solution, but they are a, a nice way to start if you have to bear in mind the limitations. The rise of super premium. Well, I mean, we've got the, one of the stars here, Jamal, with his Svalbardi water from, from the Arctic. I mean, this is probably, probably caused the most stir in the last couple of years in terms of uh, media coverage, good and bad. But it's really raised the profile of waters in general. Does help, does, that's surprising, in fact, that there are so many high-end brands being launched, despite the fact that some people find this kind of product almost obscene. You know, they feel that water is a simple right on wireless with launching this kind of brand that looks like a vodka or a, or a gin when there are people you know, suffering in third world countries. So again, it does surprise me, but on the other hand, uh, I think it's interesting to see that people have just decided that there is a niche in the market. There are certain markets, especially in the Middle East and Asia, where this kind of product is valued. And maybe it's uh, a way to get a brand established and then perhaps using this as an iconic flagship, they can then develop other brands behind it that maybe could generate more volume and in the long term a, a more um, sustainable business. But anyway, um, maybe 10 years ago I would have said to you, you know, brands that look like perfume were pretty much uh, not the way to go in terms of uh, convincing people that water was a good good product, good luxury product to consume, but it still keeps going. And uh, I don't know, some brands like I'm not convinced whether they will last because they do rely simply on design, but other ones have marvelous backstory. Uh, Jamal, for example, extraordinary personal suffering and pain just to get the ice out of the sea. And uh, water from France, which are bottled in little log cabins in the mountainsides by a couple of guys who, who have to cap in minus five degrees in the snow. It, 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 there's, nice, there's nice backstory, but again, it's a tough business. And, just because you're selling a product with $50 a bottle doesn't automatically give you the right to, to, to be successful. This is something that's quite dear to my heart. Retro design, old fashioned products that really hark back maybe to the turn of the century that talk about the origins of bottled water when it was really perhaps regarded more as a medicinal product. You could only buy it in pharmacies. People valued more the, the minerals, the magnesium, the calcium, the way to cure you know, illnesses where you had problems with your liver or kidneys. These old brands, I think, are connecting with people more and more. And I think it's also a part of a trend in general that's very <coughs> interesting, you know, whether it's artisan uh, uh, gin or it's craft beer. Often it's about the personalities behind the product, the people who make it, you know, cool dudes with the, the tattoos and the beards, or the guys who are just uh, you know, setting up the startup to give their own to uh, create a niche in the market that really reflects where the product comes from. So again, uh, Topo Chico from Mexico just recently bought, I think it was by Coca Cola. Mm. Fascinating business. It's favorite of my favorite of mine. Beautiful classic product. Uh, great carbonated water. And again, um, Coca Cola has seen the opportunity there because people value that kind of historic product with a bit of real, you know, character. Um, 
think America is pretty strong in that. There's, there's several examples here. Start is as well. It's a new product, but it's designed to look retro. It's also quite pleasing. Has a has a nice story as well. A relatively small distribution. But I think they have signed up with Whole Foods, so that gives them that nice national reach. But they seem to find a balance between <laughs> being quite national, but also have really quite a local feel. Another interesting story is uh, on Margarita, top right hand corner from Italy. Um, an old source, abandoned for many years in the, in the Alps. A young guy, recently graduated from business school, decided to buy the company and resurrect it. New bottles, new branding, um, a big commitment to the local community, organizing events, getting people to come to a village which is pretty much forgotten in the mountains. And finally, slowly getting the distribution to the big cities, simply because people identify with that kind of you know, commitment to not just a beautiful water, but to trying to stimulate the economy in, in places that maybe are struggling. Um, and again, bottom right hand corner uh, from Germany, this marvelous old what, classic bottle called the Perlen Plus, which was <coughs> designed in the 1960s, and it's still a classic uh, object used by most mineral companies, mineral water companies in, in Germany. Um, in 1969, it's been used 50 times, it can be re uh, washed and reused and refilled. And again, it's that kind of thing that maybe helps offset some of the concerns about excessive use of materials or the water. So again, there's plenty of examples of this kind of brand. I think it's something that will continue, and I think maybe it's something some of you might like to look at rather than doing something kind of flashy and uh, and minimalist in a more modern way. This is probably one of the most controversial things I thought I'd talk about. Dispensers, something that maybe you normally think about in the corner of a, an office, wherever you're in the office, and you'd not normally think that uh, it would be something that's good to find relevant to find water. But I think it is. And especially if you look at what a big brand like Evian is trying to do. They're trying to address the whole concern about environmental impact reducing the number of keys and bottles which is by trying to offer a home dispenser to a water which is connected to an app and when you use the water the bubble above it slowly collapses so it becomes some kind of design object in your home but you also have this nice warm feeling that you're doing something in the environment whether it's the right way to go I don't know but it, you can see big companies are addressing this, this concern about the environment mm -hmm. Uh, in the US, and Mountain Valley is a classic example of a, a beautiful water that is also available, probably before it even was in bottles, in, in, um, in five gallon, uh, what do you call that a bottle? I forget what the name is. It's kind of flagon or whatever you call it. Anyway, it, th these glass bottles are, uh, are shipped to homes, to offices, all over the states. And again, it's been around for years, but I think other companies are starting to think that maybe they could do a similar kind of thing. Holstein Water over here from Austria, a small company that's identified a niche in the market, very limited production, very high pricing, beautiful packaging, and actually shipping to, to, to wealthy people in the US as a kind of a high-end alternative to local brands. Uh, and also in France from Viobiar, they've got a bag in the box where they've designed a special carton dispenser that you can then put in the corner of your kitchen or also in an office, and then fill it with a five-litre five, uh, bag in box. And then my personal favourite, Rising Spring from the US, something that just appeared last year. Again, something from a beautiful spring. Great story. Lovely design. Designed really for online sales. They ship all over the States. I think in some way this could be a, a big trend for the future and something that maybe you guys need to think about. Some people get a bit sneaky about this kind of large, bulk product. I think it's done well. It is generally good product. It's good water. It's something that may have some, may help to get over this resistance to, to water in certain certain aspects of the mountain. And then this whole drama about PET and that we're damaging the planet by, by throwing away plastic into the oceans and in the landfill. Uh, at the moment, I don't think anybody has come up with anything better than glass. So I think in that sense, we should be fairly comfortable that, especially for fine dining environments, that will be the solution. Santaniol from Catalonia in Spain has come up with a beautiful bottle which is 40% lighter, 
that his previous model can take 30% of the cycle glass. So then they're addressing it and they're trying to also communicate with people that they are making an effort. So in that sense, I think glass still has a, a big future. And I don't think there's any point really in trying to find uh, alternatives to PET, especially in restaurants or, or hotels. There's one, there's one interesting brand from Germany called Sonnenstein. Again, a small, <coughs> kind of small batch, almost hand bottle source, where they're, they're bottling with ceramic bottles. Again, something that used to be used almost always in the 19th century, until, until glass was a, a, a viable alternative. And again, I think that might be something that some people might consider, at least as a, as an emblematic iconic flagship. Yeah. Low mineralized water. 
and then maybe accompanying it with a different tissue. So again, you need to think about low mineralized waters to accompany a very subtle, very delicate Japanese kind of mentality and, and, and very, very exquisite uh, product of the sake. And then the whole basis of the sake and really the sake is about 80% water and then the rice distilling comes out of that. But it seems to be the, the basis of the best product on the market. And something else we touched on earlier today, uh, tea. There's some restaurants in London which were groundbreaking with uh, a menu based on ambient brewed tea. So they were selecting some of the best tea leaves they could find from various parts of the world. Um, and then boiling the water very briefly just to open the leaves. <coughs> and then leaving that to cool in mineral water for maybe an hour to create some very subtle beverages. The idea was that they were trying to offer something as an alternative to wines, especially for people who didn't want to drink alcohol. They had a menu where they would present a whole ritual at the table with a, with a filter where they'd pour into a wine glass and then the sommelier would explain uh, the flavors and subtle differences. I think that's something that maybe again we should play around with and think about. We should maybe encourage people to, to look at as an option to maybe add value to different minerals. It's a very elegant alternative to, to wine. Another thing that's probably going to get more and more critical as, 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 the, as the years go by, um, sustainability. We always talk about sustainability in terms of recycling, um, carbon offset. There's so many examples of companies that are trying to do things different. I just wanted to raise a highlight three that I thought were at least worth a mention. Uh, from Zurich, a wood called Lokalis Vasa 37. An interesting story, you need to look it up on the internet for the whole background, but it's a, uh, a small company that has like, found some rights from the 17th century for a man who could pipe water from the local mountains around Zurich into the town, into the old city. And they've decided to use that to build a, a store in the center of the old town and bottle the water in, in the small town, in, 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 in the old town and then start to offer it to the local businesses, to the local community. Part of the benefit, the, the proceeds of the sales goes to uh, clean water projects in Africa. But the idea is to get people to be in the, in the local neighborhoods more aware of the value of mineral water, to appreciate it, to stop, import, to stop buying water from not just other parts of the world, but also other parts of and it's generating a lot of interest. The little bottling plants and the little offices are becoming almost like a meeting point for the community. So it's a nice, nice and design product. It's a cool um, uh, meeting point for people in the neighborhood. And it's also giving people a feeling that they're actually doing something of value in all water in a different way. It's just something curious. Maybe you can take a look at that. I think it's a nice project. It looks a very flaky, flaky, but it's certainly something that maybe other brands could look at to become closer to their customers. In Japan, there's a new um, water certification institute that's been that's being developed right now. It's called the Meishui Nisho, which means remarkable water. Um, what would I do this remarkable water institute. What they try and do is rather than evaluate waters on subjective um, criteria. They're trying to look at more things like the quality, the protection of the spring, you know, protection from nitrate infiltration. And they're also trying to look at the ways in which the, the company offsets its impact in the environment. And then the last product that's on the, on the list is from Holland, called Maris Ella Maris. It's a company that set out uh, to offer a range of cosmetics, naturally produced cosmetics, but also a range of waters. They donate five cents on the sale of every liter to, again to clean water projects in, uh, in developing countries. So it's, if you like, a genuinely attractive product, elegant, well presented product, backed up by another range of products that give perhaps give it more um, ability to enter into hotels uh, as amenities, but they're also offering, uh, if you like, a social responsibility aspect in an original way. And then something that I, I, I think is maybe more intangible, but I think this is going to be more and more important, especially as we were talking about millennials earlier. Are the people uh, very much aware of this 
design presentation, how it how people identify with, with the product in the same way as they would buy uh, the latest cool sneakers or, or a watch or, 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 or a pair of jeans. Some brands have seen that you need to present yourself uh, or in a way that people can identify with, 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 with their lifestyle and their, and their values. So I think a company like uh, Aqua Monaco, which is in Germany, uh, is a good example. A, a, a young startup. They've also got a range of tonics. So they put a lot of effort into organizing events in cities like Dusseldorf and Cologne, uh, where they sponsor music festivals, where they go to fashion events. So they do it in a very, very original way. Um, and they have a high, if you like, high element of design around the brand. But again, it's a lot of work, but they've just directed like they've, they've chosen a simple bottle without that great upfront investment, and then they've loaded all the the, the money that they have is much more of the marketing and promotional aspect, which some brands often forget. The new brand from Denmark, which Jan Bender probably wouldn't have liked to hear about, but um, I'm not sure if I can pronounce it correctly, but it's Bornholm Kilderland, which is a small island off the coast of Denmark. A uh, company startup has, um, has launched its brand. Very weird, strange labels on basic standard kind of Vichy style bottles. The 1950s or 60s, and then a whole interesting kind of youth orientated promotion going to try and sell it in the latest hip cool uh, restaurants in, in Copenhagen and elsewhere. Again, the emphasis is much more on, on, on um, the water and getting people to think about it in different ways rather than the branding, although the branding is kind of cool and weird, catch people's attention, but then later they take the focus on working on it. And then that's an emperor for Deb. Antipodes for me has always been one of the best examples of a, of a, of a, of a brand that's doing all the right things. <coughs> Great water, understated branding, very, very true to their values, always trying to get to the right places, not really kind of compromising on, on what they want to do, which is really just to offer this <coughs> a limited range of, of outlets. And really, if you look at their social media as well, they're always very careful about the way that they present the brand. They associate themselves with certain events, whether it's cultural or gourmet or so so and so, and they've done that for the last 10, 15 years, you know, without a hiccup. I think that's a really good example to follow. I'm always banging on about antiquities. From from the moment I started importing it in 2006, I've always thought it was probably one of the the icons, if you like, the fine water uh, category. It's, it's something that, that I, I really urge you to take a look at and, and, and find what the, if you can find out what the secret is, you know. <laughs> But anyway, just, just some just some um, a few suggestions, and then finally something that again I think is quite interesting: uh, rainwater, which has been around for a while, or at least for the last 10, 15 years, but has never really really taken off. People have always found it as sort of a very esoteric niche in the market. But suddenly there's several brands coming up, building roofs where they're collecting water in Oregon, in Chile, down in Tasmania. Um, all these brands are really very small companies, often just one or two guys, but they're, if you like, doing something that, I guess, again, connects with people who, in the same way as they like a, a craft beer with unusual flavors or textures, these people are coming to the table with something, with a little bit of a sense of humor, but also something original that, uh, that often some chef, some barman use as a nice basis for unusual cocktails, because of the low mineralization. Um, Cloud juice, just off the right hand corner. That used to be served in the famous El Buji restaurant in, in Spain, which is five times uh, best restaurant in the world. Again, it connects with people who are looking to try and you know, push the boundaries and do something different in the market. And another strange category, subcategory, if you like, of rain is mist and breeze water, where companies are trying to collect. Um, Water with nets or uh, humidifiers just to collect the water in a different way. And again, maybe some people are a little cynical saying it's a bit of a gimmick, but again, it's just showing you people are always looking for the latest uh, opportunity to create a new water that hasn't been kind of like mouthfeel or even backstory to whatever you feel you can help yourself to. Now, just on a few positive things, according to Zenith, we're still as an as a overall market growing really strongly. 
and that's you know, good for us. But again, we know deep down that a lot of that growth goes to the big guys. So uh, however much is growing, we need to make sure that you know, we don't. Uh, we actually are part of that in a relevant way, rather than just going on the coattails of the big multinationals. Another thing that I think I wanted to come back to earlier: good per and price bottles from Germany. Recyclable, reusable bottles was given an award this year as a design classic. And I think it's an important thing to remember that we often obsess by the design of our brand, our bottle. They're very elaborate, they're very expensive, they stand out on the table. I'm not sure whether in the long term that's appropriate anymore. And also, maybe we're victims of our own. Maybe we don't help ourselves sometimes by over designing a product and we forget to talk about the water. So if we could maybe calm down a little bit sometimes and focus on the water and maybe have a simple, elegant, unstated water bottle, that might help us to be taken more seriously in the general market. So maybe less is more in the sense of mm, less packaging, but we learn a new vocabulary, we're able to communicate and articulate what the hell is this water. Mm. What is the minerality? Why does that occur where we with one? I think we, we, we talked about that a lot today, but I think we need to focus on that more and more. And Michael and Martin and the sommelier boom, I think, is, is a great uh, opportunity to, to address that. So I, 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 I would like to think that maybe we should stop agonizing about designing the most iconic bottle to fit with the rest of the brand. And maybe Agonize more about uh, how on earth we convince people that our water is fresh. <coughs> Any questions? My feeling is with, with fine waters, with glass bottles, we're, we're designed principally for fine dining. It's always going to be restaurants and hotels and bars. That's, that's not something that's really relevant for online, in my opinion. What, what is going to probably grow is more of the super premium brands that people often buy just one off for an event or for a gift. I mean, Jamal with his Svalbardi, a big chunk of his sales is online. Uh, that, that people all over the world want a gift or they want a case for a special event. So that will work. But I don't think that if you're, if you're talking about regular volume, I don't think online sales, at least in my opinion, are not maybe so relevant. You need to have, you still need to have a local distributor on the ground moving the cases when the restaurant needs it. I don't think there's any way around that. It could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you and Christopher Kenosis kind of at each other. Yeah, I just cut the tension. <laughs> No, um, you had said before you felt like the sustainability issues come across like as an apology.